Hello, our little spooks. I'm Kimberly. And I'm Lexi. Welcome to the Guarded by Demons podcast where we discuss all things horror. Yeah, so happy November, everyone. Uh, today we sat down and watched 2008's uh, Repo the Genetic Opera. Yeah. I'm a little tired. <laughs> I'm a little tired too, but it's okay. Uh, t- mm. <laughs> Uh, at this so movie. what's your first reaction to this movie? Not review, reaction. Um, mm, my first reaction would be, mm, damn, this hurts my eyes <laughs> to look at. Oh, it's a big mood. <laughs> Anything that has to do with like early, late 2000s movies and their editing, how bright it is. It's like, it's got a weird filter over the entire thing. Yeah. It's the only way I could describe it, and it hurts because it's so saturated. And, of course, it's an HD, so it's, like, HD just makes it even brighter. brighter. So that doesn't really help. I was so ready to knock the fuck out right after this movie. I was so tired. I was like, oh my god. My eyes hurt so bad, I just want to go to sleep. You almost knocked out. I ended up just still going on Netflix and watching stuff. I took a nap for, like, an hour, and then it came back out here, and we ate chicken tenders, and then I went to bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What a great way to end the night. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Uh, so the first time I watched this movie, um, I was, I was, I was like in middle school. This was literally probably two to three years after this movie came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and Adam, my cousin, who you guys have heard on the podcast, uh, he was like, hey, have you seen this movie? Because at the, at the time, I liked a lot of, uh, musical, and, musicals and horror movies, but I had never seen, like, a musical horror movie before. And he's like, I think you might like this one. And I'm like, okay. But he literally sat me down in his, like, little room that he had when he used to live with his parents. Uh-huh. Um, which was basically the laundry room, but they never had, like, a laundry washer situation thing. Oh. Uh-huh. So they made that into his little room where he would play guitar and shit. How oh, neat. Um, so he literally just sat me down on the bench that he had there and made me watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and your thoughts? And my thoughts uh, at the time when I first watched it where I really like the music. I like the story. I like how this is going. Um, but I could not say anything about how this was filmed exactly. I just knew it bothered me, but I couldn't really pinpoint what bothered me by it. Uh-huh. It wasn't until we watched it recently when I had like the HD upgrade and everything. I was like, no, I still like the story. I still like the songs that are in there. Um, but I just, I can't watch it. Because of how bright it is, like it hurts it my hurts. eyes so much, and and I'm the one with okay <laughs> eyes, and it hurt my eyes. Yeah, I was like, I was like, damn, I'm ready to go sleep. Bro. So here's the thing: we are watching it again for this breakdown. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I, I'm gonna be suffering the entire time because I didn't enjoy myself with this movie. <laughs> oh, I mean, okay, so when we first watched it together. It felt a lot longer, only, not only, but it didn't help that we had commercials. Yeah, we had commercials, thanks, Tubi. Not sponsored, but I mean. No, but you can watch it on Tubi for free with commercials, or you can watch it on Amazon Prime with uh, Freebie. Also has ads. So you can you can just watch it for free. Yeah. Anywhere. Anywhere. <sighs> The ads lasted for so long. I know, they did. It's like actually watching it on TV, and I'm like, gross. Gross. But whatever. I mean, it's free. You can't really complain about it. Although, I won't complain about it too very much, because it gave me... It gave my eyes a break. Yeah. <laughs> At least a little bit. <laughs> Just a little. Um. But yeah, I mean, overall, I did enjoy it. Mm, I did not. I didn't enjoy it. I wanted to, but I didn't. And it made me sad. I know. I know you like this movie a lot. It made me sad. I was bummed that I didn't enjoy it. But it's That's fine. fine. <laughs> there are movies that you like that I don't enjoy. Yeah, Midsummer. Yeah. But that's for different reasons. I that, just is for, that is for different reasons. But that, <laughs> that is for traumatic reasons. Yeah, that's va- that's really valid. <laughs> like, but this one, I was just like, I don't, I just don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not my flavor. Uh, but it's okay. 
But it's it's completely okay. But it's good. It was bound to happen. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of movies that either we both don't like, or either one of us are just not gonna like. Yeah, like last week. <laughs> last week we're like, mm, Carrie remake. Mm, okay. Well, I mean, yeah. Last week we liked the original Carrie, and we both hate the, the 2013 remake. remake. I would also like to upgrade. Or update my uh, rating for the remake from 1.5 to 0.5 because, yike. <laughs> I still like that you're generous with your rating for Carrie. It's for Tommy, okay? <laughs> I I still cannot give it anything just because of those characters. I know. I still cannot give it anything because I'm going off whether the movie is worth watching as a whole and it's not. No, it's not. It is not. It's- Painfully boring to watch. Oh, God. Um, but with this one, it's subjective. It's very subjective. Me, personally, I was bored with this movie. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. With this one, it is subjective. It's very subjective. I I was still really... Because I liked the theme, or, like, the, the plot, but I was really confused a lot of the time. And I didn't care for the songs, which made me sad. Because I usually, I love musicals, usually. But this time around, I was like, hmm, the songs are kind of annoying. I'm not gonna lie. But it's fine. It's fine, I guess. It's okay. It happens. It's fine. Builds character. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. At least you don't have to listen to the songs. Yeah. You're just gonna break it down. Yes. So again, if you haven't seen this movie, spoilers ahead. Huge spoilers, actually. Um, As always. But also, fun fact, Paris Hilton is in this movie. Yeah! That was, that was really weird. I was like, huh? The fuck? The 2000s were a thing for Paris Hilton. Yeah, I keep forgetting about that. Yes. She plays a character in this called Amber Sweet, or Amber yeah. Sweets, or I don't fucking... It's either Sweet or Sweets, I can't remember now. Either one, <laughs> you're correct anyway. Yeah. It's not her legal last name, <laughs> but I mean... Wow! Technically, it is. She changed it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we'll, we'll get into it. It's fine. All right. Well, here we go. I will say, I do like the comic book stuff that they show throughout. Oh, yeah. So, there's comic book sections for scenes that they don't film. Um, which is just telling everyone else's, like, story and filler information. Yeah. And I, it started off with singing. I, was, I looked at you and was like, oh, is this a fucking musical? And I didn't hit me when it said genetic, or, yeah, the genetic opera. I was like, oh, it's an opera. <laughs> yeah. But it's, just, it, it's different than a musical. Yeah. Also, in my opinion, or in my opinion, in my defense, when I saw opera, I thought it was short for operation. <laughs> oh my fucking God. But to be fair, this has operation stuff in it. It does. I'm really dumb. But that's really fucking funny. I'm really dumb. And I don't deserve it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't deserve this. Why do I have a lack of brain cells when it comes to this stupid bullshit? (laughs) Fuck's sake. You're fine, but hi. Here we go. We get the opening credits for Lionsgate, which is pretty cool, honestly. Yeah! I always like the, the 2000s uh, Lionsgate opening. Spooky. With, like, the gears and shit, and um, Classic we get Lionsgate. Twisted Studios opening, which is always pretty fun to yeah. watch. Of course, I like Lionsgate uh, opening now as well, because, you know, the stars! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. It's pretty. It's very pretty. <laughs> oh, shit. But, yeah, we... um are opening with a song of course is it a song or is it just like just the comic book uh right now it's just the comic book okay i could not remember explaining for explaining everything that's going on about what happened in the year uh 2054 i think for 56 oh my god i'm gonna be 56 years old <sighs> yeah there's this company named jinko and they do um, a lot of transplants, like kidney transplants, heart transplants, this, that, the other. Just a lot of organ transplants. Yeah. And it's because, well, in the year 2056 to 2040, 
uh, is when it started, when every single organ starts to fail in uh, the human body, and Jinko takes it up to themselves, where they have contracts that you sign, mm-hmm. and they help you live on for, I mean, as long as you fucking can. Um, and if you keep up with your payments, you're completely fine. But if you're not, then, uh, basically they send a repo man to come and take back the organs. Yeah. And also, um, they're also explaining that there are grave robbers that make this version of Zydrate, which is used for the surgery, um, but they take it from dead bodies. Yes. And sell it on the black market. Yes. Also, it's Amber Sweet. I just saw it for like half a second. Nice. Yeah, so we get the uh, introductions of the three Largo uh... children. Yes. Every time I see Largo, I think of Slime Rancher. <laughs> nice. I'm just like, oh, they're so cute, but these guys are not. <laughs> they suck. But yeah, they always call one specific repo man to come in and take the organs back. Also, I think it's funny that they have um, a barcode with Gene Go written on it on the organs. It feels oh, like it came from a Halloween store. <laughs> right. I'm going to say it right now, my favorite character throughout this entirety of the movie is the Grave Robber. I like his vibes. Which he's, is... He's not in this movie nearly enough. He's not. It's everyone's favorite character in this movie. I have a type. <laughs> he... He is probably part of my type, TBH. So yeah, we get the opening scene where we get the grave robber. Yes. Um, basically, this the song is recapping everything. Mostly about if you can't pay your payments, then the repo man is going to come and get you. And we have this woman who's trying to run from the repo man. Yes. Yeah, I really like the grave robber. He's cool. Mm-hmm. I like his vibe. Yeah, he's my favorite character, too. <laughs> I think I remember you texting me about him one time. Yeah. And you said something along the lines of, he's one of your favorite stinky men. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's him and Beetlejuice, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I always like him a lot, man. Isn't this movie one of the reasons why you have a thing with eyeball stuff? With eyeball stuff? Yeah. No. Spoilers for later, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, this isn't... Because, like, the eyeball stuff isn't that bad. That's true. It's not that bad. Also, it's valid. Yeah. When it comes down Very to it. Very valid. When it comes down to it, I would too. <laughs> Ugh. Um, no. It, if it's like an eyeball thing, it's dead space. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. with the laser. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's dead space and Final Destination 4, I think. I think Bro. it's 4 or 5. The one that has like the laser eye surgery. Um, section, yeah. Those mm. are the ones that I don't like. Yeah. Also, repo is short for repossession. Yes. So they're re- they're doing repossession on organs. So that's fun. I do like the setting. It's kind of steampunky. Yeah. And I have said this before. Um, sci-fi has to have, like, a certain kind of sweet spot for me to be able to enjoy it. Because I, it, I just don't find sci-fi all that fascinating. For some reason. I've always wanted to like sci-fi, but it has to be a certain kind of sci-fi. No, same here. Like, this, I can sort of get behind. I just really like the fucking story itself. Yeah, the story is Because, like, I could separate it from the actual, like, movie. Yeah. Um, the story itself is, like, really solid. So fucking good. But if, like, a sci-fi element also, it's just, like... I'm very picky. Alien was, like, right off the edge. <laughs> where yeah. I was like, do I like this? Do I not like this? I don't know. I was getting pretty bored with Alien a little bit. Oh, re- were you really? Yeah. Well, the first time I watched it. Yeah. Yeah, like, um, I've been replaying Subnautica, and that's up my alley for sci-fi stuff. I think it's because it's, like, it's mostly about a different planet. Mm-hmm. And not about you as a human being there. Yeah. And this is what... Let me... I'm going to pause you real quick because <laughs> I just want to go on a tangent for a second. This is why I also... I like Avatar, but I don't give a rat's ass about the military aspect of it all. 
I don't like Avatar at all. No? No. Because I think the world is fascinating, and I like the Navi, and I like their, um, their practices and everything about it, but when it keeps cutting back to this military, this white man getting ready to take over this beautiful planet, I'm like, I don't care. I do care about the planet being taken over because that's shitty, but I don't care about what the humans are doing. I want to learn about the Navi. Also, my cat is in here. He is stretched out. He's got his head pressed against the bottom of my door. He's sleeping. It's funny. But yeah. And that's why I like Subnautica is because it's all of that without the military shit. There's still some earthly stuff, but that's literally because you've been shot out of the sky and into the ocean. And you're the sole survivor of it. And you're trying to get home. Also, I mean, sci-fi dead space I can get behind. I don't know anything about Dead Space, so... Dead Space I can get behind, because I've watched that and play it. Um, Alien is, like, really iffy. I do like it, but for some reason I do kind of find it a little, little bit boring, but not that much, honestly. Another good example for... And it's not horror, but I know you like it, too. Uh, Detroit Become Human yeah. is really good. I love that. That's a that's a great game. <laughs> Another sci-fi thing, Stranger Things. Stranger Things, like. yeah. Yeah. But that's more... Um, that's also, like, creature like stuff and it is sci-fi but i mean aliens more creature stuff too so yeah it's just human aspect stuff is really boring yeah and if you think about it um is that why i stopped watching the walking dead yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah i I, I stopped watching the walking dead because they started killing characters for no fucking reason and Mm -hmm. it got annoying as shit i was like dude I mean, to be fair, I stopped before, like, Terminus happened, and then I heard, like, really good shit happen in Terminus, and I was like, mm, I still don't want to watch it, though. Yeah, Terminus was really good. It started going bad when they got to Alexandria. I bet. <laughs> I was like, god damn, dude, it could not get worse, and then it would get worse. And then it got and way worse, apparently. they're still stretching it. It still hasn't ended. Fuck. It's been, like, two years since they said, yeah, we're gonna go into the final season. I'm pretty sure they I'm pretty sure they filmed everything, but they're stretching that shit out, and I'm like, please. They are milking that shit. And they just came out with a an official whiskey for The Walking Dead as well. Wow. <laughs> After all this time? Mm-hmm. Holy shit. You'd think that'd be one of the first things, considering it's real southern. Right? Because we're in Georgia in the yeah. first season. Yeah. But okay. I don't know. All right. Back to the movie. Back to the movie. Sorry about that. (laughs) We're in the headquarters of Jinko. Jinko. And we meet this guy, Roddy, which I think is a very bidding name because he's rotten. Yes. And his three children, of which he clearly just doesn't like. (laughs) So his three children are Luigi. (laughs) Yeah. Amber. Mm Mm-hmm. And Pravi. Amber's got the most normal name. Yeah. And yet she gets the most shit. What the yeah. fuck is this? Because she's obsessed with getting surgery. I'm like, okay, if she could afford it. But also, if it is on the black market, she could, she, she could still afford it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no. But yeah, Roddy um, gets his, I think he's like personal doctor or whatever comes in. Um, and he's been diagnosed with a terminal illness. I don't know if they e- state what it is. I don't think so. They just say that it's terminal. Yeah, we were like, what is it? I'm like, I don't know what it is. I can't read that shit. You see, you hear terminal and you're like, oh, well, he's dead. Yeah. That's fine. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Terminal. You're dead. You're dying. Pretty much. Sorry, guy. Uh, but yeah. He finds out about that and one of his fucking assistants, I was he, like, right next to him, just shoots the fucking doctor. Well, he tells them to. Like, point blank. Yeah. It's that, just after he finds out. Yeah. He says, you don't have much time. It's spreading rapidly. And he's like, huh. He fucking slammed this shit on the table, too. Yeah. He angy. Which I get. There it goes. There he goes. There goes the doctor. What'd the doctor do? He's just doing his job. Yeah, but he's just upset, so he's still gonna kill him anyway. This is lame. Very. I guess we got a funeral right now. I forgot. But now we're in a graveyard, and I'm our main girl, Shiloh, is here sneaking around, I guess. For some reason. I did not catch why. Also, uh, she's gonna see her mother's grave. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so we get Roddy, uh, explaining that since <sighs> he's passing away, someone has to inherit his business. And he doesn't want to, inher- like, let his kids inherit it because yeah. they all suck. They all fucking suck. Also, uh, 
I, I made this note to myself because I was so just annoyed by the end of this movie. I was like, if I ever hear the name Shiloh and it's not a cute dog, I will shoot myself because it's driving me nuts. Oh, they say her name so many times. I, I want to make a drinking game out of it. If you watch this movie, take a shot every time they say the name Shiloh. Please do it. Also, we're not responsible if you get alcohol poisoning. We are not. <laughs> I mean, also, we should say who the fuck plays Shiloh. Oh, yeah, it's um, Alexa Vega, right? Alexa Pena Vega, yeah. Yeah. Who is uh, <laughs> Carlos Pena's uh, wife? Who you may know him from, Big Time Rush. <laughs> yep. Also, if you know her, she's from the Spy Kids movies. She <laughs> plays Carmen. Yeah, they just combined their last names when they got married. And they have two kids. Or is it three? Two. I can't remember. I don't know, man. And now they star in Hallmark movies, and I think they could do so much better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we get Shiloh visiting her mother's grave as she... As it looks like she does frequently. Mm-hmm. She sneaks out in a gas mask. And then takes it off and then doesn't put it back on when she goes back outside. Which, okay. But she just thinks she's just gonna get the bug that she finds. Yeah, there's a sleazy man. There's the grave robber. There he be. He's sneaking around looking to get some of, uh, zitrate. That's what it is. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, she's catching a bug because she likes bugs. She likes to collect them. We see that later on in her room. Yeah. That she likes to collect and do taxidermy on the bugs. Oh, God, I gotta look away for a second. It's made my eyes get heavy already. <laughs> I'm like, ah. <laughs> it's not as bad on the laptop, though. So that's good. No. I think it's brighter on the TV. Oh, yeah. Definitely it is. Yeah, I think it's way brighter on the TV. Also, I could turn down the brightness on my laptop <gasps> anyway. That's true. Yeah, she's being uh, freaked out by the grave robber. Which, I don't know why he pretty, but whatever. It's <laughs> fine. That's a child. Of course she would. She doesn't know that's, anything. That's true. She hasn't gone outside either, as we find out later on. Yeah. She does She's not allowed to go outside. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's taking the Zydra out of... yeah. Out of the fucking corpse's nose. nose. Ew. Fucking... Man, all she wanted to do was just get a bug and go back. Yeah. <laughs> she just wanted a bug. She want buggy. But no. Do we ever see that bug again? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, damn. That dude just got left in a jar. That sucks. Yeah. But we have uh, security people going around because they're looking for him. Yeah. Doesn't help that he yells out graves with this fucking song that he's singing. No. No. <laughs> My dude, you go, get, you go get captured. Now he's lugging around a corpse, which I think is really funny looking. He's gonna tear down a wall with that. And it, I thought that was fucking funny. <laughs> oh, shit. Also... Oh, so many bodies. They Yeah, they fall into where of, there's just a shit ton of bodies in a building. Fun. And he's like, oh shit, hell yeah, Jackpot. more. <laughs> he barely just starts getting one vial, though. Yeah. It's fine. But yeah, Shiloh does end up getting captured. Yeah. There's also so many titties in this movie. Yeah. Well, just in the beginning, I feel like. Not as much later. No. There is one towards the end, though, what I thought was a little bit funny. I think it was a news reporter. Pretty sure. And she was showing off her titties. The show was funny. Was it just because she got them done? I think so. I think so. I don't remember. They look real natural. Yep. But yeah, we got those, I think, officers, soldiers, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. They grabbed Shiloh. Yeah, they grabbed Shiloh. Security. <laughs> SWAT team. Oh, I'm yeah, security. Enough. I don't fucking know. But they, it, it's, it's Roddy's team, pretty much. Yeah. But he tells them to let them go. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. It's like blood pressure, right? Or something like that? Yeah, blood pressure. Um, That starts like, yeah. Yeah. She has blood pressure warning. Like, it's a bracelet that tells her that she needs to medicate immediately because her blood pressure is going really, really high. Because she is apparently sick with some kind of blood disease? Yes. That was passed on by her mom. That was passed on by her mom. Is it a little better now that it's kind of, like, darker? Kinda. Still still kind of hurts, but it's okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll get- It's not as bad. I'll get through. It's fine. <laughs> then we get the musical number with Shiloh and her dad, Nathan. Yeah. It's just a father-daughter thing where it's, like, she went out, he got really worried. They're arguing over it. 
because yeah. of the th- shit that she saw. But also, he kind of gaslights her into being like, you didn't leave, you mm-hmm. didn't go out anywhere, uh, I don't like that. I don't like that either. I have a thing for gaslighters, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, ugh. grody. I get that he's trying to be protective and shit, but I don't like that. That's how you push your kids away. Yeah. And it's how he did, actually. Yeah. So. It's still sad, though, because, like, she just wants to go out and explore the world, but she fucking can't. Yeah, this is reminding me a little bit too much of Tangled. <laughs> yeah. Just fuck. It's more fucked up in certain ways. <laughs> it's more darker than Tangled. Yeah. Honestly, I wish we got more of the mom, too. Yeah. Instead of... It... Marnie seems cool. Yeah. I do wish we got more of the mom. Yeah. We do get those, like, comic book flashbacks and sequences and stuff like that explaining everything. Yeah. We do. <laughs> Excuse me. But I wish I had actual scenes. Other than what Mag shows with her eyes later. Yeah. Which I think. I think Mag and the Grave Robber are my favorite characters. If I had to pick. Ooh, yeah. Even after all these years, those two, still great. Yeah. And I have to say, I'm not a fan of her, of Shiloh singing in particular. I don't know why. I don't like it, though. It's, it's like, there are times where it does sound pretty good. Yeah. But then there are times where it just doesn't, and it's like, oh. It's like, mm. Mm. No, thank. And it was here where I was like, I don't like this singing here. <laughs> I don't like her singing here. And then there's another one later that I don't like her singing there either. It's like, um... Is it the rock sequence in her bedroom? Yeah. yeah. Oh my fucking god. That was so cringy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was dying inside with that. Uh, I was like, oh my god. Please. I'm not gonna lie, me too. I'm like, Stop. I want to turn into a turtle right now. <laughs> me too. This is my third time watching it. Well, not fourth time. But like, third time I watched it with you, I was like, mm. I still cringe at that. It's, it's unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> it's really unnecessary. I was like, what are they going for here? Yeah, but uh, pretty much we're just seeing Shiloh singing around her room about the blood disease that she got from her mom. And we see all this, like, other stuff that she has in her room. And um, you see that she does collect the bugs and she does, like, store them in her room. Yeah. Which is really pretty. Honestly. Also, her dad locks her in. Yeah. So she cannot leave. Also, in some points, she kind of looks like Esther from The Orphan to me. She looks like Isabel Furman a little bit. I think it's the hair. And, uh, like, mm-hmm. certain lighting with her face. Yeah. I can see that. We do a fan. He's stretch and he sleep. I, I do like how she looks out into the world, though, with her window. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, don't get me wrong. Some some things here look cool, but a lot of it, I'm like, uh. <laughs> I do like their house. It's pretty cool, honestly. It's very, not out of place, but unique to the world. Because you th- you're looking at this, and it's very steampunky. Yeah. And this house doesn't, it looks like it came from the 1800s. It's very pretty. So now we get a flashback to, in the comic uh, thing, for Nathan and his wife Marnie. And Marnie is pregnant, heavily pregnant, but she gets sick. And uh, the doctor, uh, Nathan, thinks he found the cure. But it ended up killing her and he had to perform a C-section on Marnie. And hence Shiloh was born. Yeah. But it's, like, really one of the saddest things. Yeah. It's like, aw, man. You imagine having to perform a C-section on your own wife and then your wife dying right after? I would not be able to look at my child, I don't think, without feeling, like, guilty. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, he does feel guilty. Heavily. Oh, fuck yeah. Because he's like, oh, I killed my wife. Even though we find out later, he did not. No. Which is still really fucking sad, because it's like, oh, shit. Yeah. It's sad. It is sad. It's very sad. Oh, my God. Yeah, look away for a second. (laughs) Oh, we do see them together a little bit. Yeah. We see him performing the C-section on her, too. Yeah. But it's sad. He, yeah, he's having his little moment. He's being emo. It's okay. Yeah. (laughs) Like everyone else in this story. Oh, yeah, for sure. (laughs) 
honestly, I really would go on Etsy and buy those little, like, Zydrate bottles. I really would. I could probably look for them for you later, if you want me to. Oh, I know. People sell them. I know. I have them. I have them on my wish list. (laughs) I don't fucking buy them. I do like the pictures that they have. Mm Mm-hmm. Like the portraits. The digital ones? Yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're portraits. They're digital. Like, they fucking move. The future, man. It, it, it reminds me of Harry Potter in a really weird way with the paintings that move. But these are, like, more, definitely more... They're, like, holographic. Yeah. There you go. Holographic. I couldn't remember the word for holograph for a second. <laughs> yeah, they're, like, holograph paintings. Um, and or, they watch you. Yeah. Which I think is creepy and cool. They fucking watch you, man. They peek in. <laughs> it's so funny, though. Just, just imagine... That's a hard pass for me there, dude. Like, goddamn, It's like man. a regular old picture. They do look cool, but I will take a regular old picture any day, because I don't want that watching me. Same. It's so weird, because it's just like, they're actually there. Yeah. That's not... That's not what I want. Yeah. It's like having... Because they look ghostly. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the point. Can you imagine getting up in the middle of the night and forgetting you have those <gasps> to get some water? Oh my god. <laughs> Can you fucking believe that? That would be fucking scary. It I'm would not gonna be. Lie. It would be fucking scary. Let me go back up to Shiloh in her room, and she hears about a uh, blind mag, who is going to be performing her last uh, opera. Yes. This this evening, or is it the next oh, evening? Oh, actually. So before we get to Shiloh. <laughs> yeah. We do get the scene with the three the siblings. Siblings. They're fighting over basically who's gonna who's gonna get the the inheritance. Yeah. Also, I just I like them, but I don't like all of the sexual stuff that's happening around them. It feels unneeded. I'm usually like pretty fine like, with it, but I'm like It does feel very unneeded, unnecessary, but that's I think that's mostly part of like part uh, Probably's character with him. That's mostly with his character. With like Luigi, I don't really think so. Mm-mm. But yeah, they're, they're, those who are just fucking fighting over it, where it's like, no, I'm gonna get it. No, yes. I'm gonna get it because Dad thinks I'm the best. Luigi and Bobby, yeah, yeah, like how siblings are. Yeah, <sighs> stupid. except they're rich and they're being pathetic yeah. and pitiful about it. Um. Also, eat the rich. Yes. Also, one of the brothers has someone's face on their face, so. Yeah, Poppy does. Yes. Fucking gross. It's so gross. It's nasty, bro. Okay, now we go back up to Shiloh, and she's watching her little itty-bitty TV. I do like Blind Mag a lot. I do like Blind Mag. I kind of wish we got more of her character, too. Same. Her singing is actually good. <clears throat> yes! I really like her singing. Who plays her? Do you know? Uh, yes, I do. You sure do? It's in Mendels. Also, apparently, um, Roddy has gotten a hold of Shiloh's quote unquote number, but he contacts her through this little holographic watch that yeah. she's got. And he knew her mother because he will used to be in love with her. Yes. And then she left him for Nathan. Which is big bum bum bro. And then he ended up killing Marnie because if I can't have her, nobody can have her. Which is sad because for years Nathan thought he fucking killed her. Yeah. This is 17 years, by the way, because Shiloh is 17. Phantom is snoring. Oh yeah, I can hear him. He said, Duh, baby. So Sarah Brightman played Blind Bag. Okay, Sarah Brightman. She looks like she belongs in a band. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe her. Oh, she looks much different now. Holy crap. Oh, she's 62. That's why. <laughs> no shot. She was married to Lloyd Webber. Amazing. The fuck? Andrew Lloyd Webber. He created cats. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, yeah. So now we get Shiloh meeting Roddy. Oh, yeah. Fun. At her mother's grave, by the way. Oh, yeah. For funsies. I guess. For funsies! I guess. Where else are you gonna meet up? This is one thing we have in common. I, mean, I loved your mother. She's your mother. I, just, I don't know. 
I loved her so much you killed her. <laughs> yeah. Out of jealousy. What a petty bitch. Also, this this was apparently... Uh, I'm going to burn her phone back. Uh, this is Sarah Brightman's first film appearance. Oh, shit. Like, ever. Neat. Yeah, and so Roddy has picked up Shiloh, and he is explaining that his uh, he owns Jinko and his children are very disappointing. He's just asking her questions right now. Yeah. Basically interrogating her. Yeah. Because he doesn't understand why she can't, like, leave. And she's just like, well, it's because of the blood disease that I got from my mom. Yeah. She cannot be outside. Yes. And he says, oh, I've got an antidote. And you can be the first person to try it. Yes. Basically what he's doing right now, he's he's just trying to get another person to be the voice or face of Gene Co. Yeah, because um, he's getting ready to get rid of Mag. Which is really sad. What the fuck, man? I like Mag. I like Mag, too. It's really stupid, but okay. It's fine, I guess. But he does entice her to come to the, the opera, that's basically Yeah, it. because or she doesn't want the... her dad to worry. Yeah, or yeah. like come to the show or whatever yeah, that's going to happen. It's an opera, it's an opera. I don't know if it's the opera, if it's just the show in general that's going to happen right now. Mm. For Meg. Oh, gotcha. And he's like, oh, Dad doesn't have to know. Because Dad's about to go do a repo job and Shiloh mm-hmm. doesn't know that he's the repo man. Yeah. It's all a huge fucking secret. It's a big secret to keep from your kid there, guy. <laughs> go back to Nathan. He's doing his repo job. He's getting ready to yoink this dude's kidneys, I think. Or one of them. This dude's fucking terrified as shit. He is fucking violently shaking. Which yeah. Which is understandable. I don't know, I think Nathan's having the time of his fucking life with this. But then later he's like, I don't want, I didn't want to do this. Yet. I'm like, I don't know, dude. Earlier you seemed like you were having a little bit too much fun. Yeah. <laughs> which is it? Which is it? You can't have both. You cannot have both. I do like the gore. I was getting movie. ready to just say the exact same thing. I do like the gore. <laughs> The garden is pretty it's good. It's practical. Yeah. Of course I'm gonna like it. It's pretty good. I fucking like it. I like it a lot. He plays fucking, he, after getting all the intestines and shit out, he plays puppet with the fucking dead body because there's a big ass hole where the chest cavity should be. <laughs> my dude is dead. Oh, he was having too much fucking fun. Way too much fun, my guy. You see him cleaning up his, his suit. His repo suit. And we got another, uh... Another advertisement for Blind Mag's performance. Yeah. She's talking about how she's the voice of Jinko. Oh, excuse me. I do say the uh, Italian Renaissance is... It looks fun. I mean, like, there's contortionists and juggling and fire bend Or fire bending? Fire breathing. <laughs> fire bending. <laughs> fire breathing. <laughs> it does look really fun, honestly. Of course, it's kind of hard to not let a carnival look fun. Also, uh, Bobby's getting blowy from two ladies. Yep. While getting his mask put back on, which is gross, but okay. It's a new face. It's a new face. Yeah, apparently he got a new face. Mm, amazing. Gross. Also, Luigi's just an asshole. Yeah, he's. they describe him later as having a short temper, and he's literally just an asshole. Yeah. I'm not even going to call her Amber. I'm just going to call her Paris. We got Paris Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> She was just complaining because she wants to sing instead of uh, Blind Mag. Mag. Is Mag? I mean, which she does and fails pretty quickly. Yeah, it's funny. It's very funny. I remember seeing something about that scene at some point, but I don't remember if I was watching like a countdown or something, but I don't fucking remember. Also, just like, Mag is really pretty. She's very pretty. Her eyes are really cool. Yeah. I do like that you can see, like, Shiloh's innocence right here. Where she's just, like, just a kid. Yeah. She's never been out in the world. No. I like that she has a fascination. But now we're getting Mag's story. Yeah. She was, she was blind. She's not blind anymore, but... She they call They call her Blind Mag because, I guess, the name just fucking stick. Uh, we find out Mag and Marnie were best friends. Mm-hmm. And Marnie thought that she could help. So she introduced Roddy to Meg, and he was able to help her get some new eyes so she can actually see. But then that just made her, like, contracted to be the, basically, spokesperson for Jean Co. Yeah. 
Because I think she was the first one to ever get an operation like that. And that succeeded? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Ooh. I think it would be cool to have those kind of eyes, but also, like, damn. Expensive. Yeah. Even more expensive than, like, traditional laser eye surgery. Hi, Red. Oh, the cat. Oh, oh. don't fall. You okay? He just want to hang out. He's Excuse good? me, sir. Yeah, he's okay. Oh, my God. I'm okay, too, if that's what you're worried about, but no. It, he didn't... That's who I was like, did he scratch you? No, he didn't scratch me. He just grabbed onto the sheets. It's okay. He's okay. Yeah, I thought he, like, got your leg or something. No, he's fine. It was... It was over here. He's okay. And I'm okay, too. Thank you for your concern. Good. Trust me. No, no, you would have... You would have known if I you know got I know what I heard because I heard you when Silky fucking got your leg. Yeah. Have that. It's amazing. <laughs> got ya. But yeah, we get Shiloh in the, uh, one of the tents, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. One of the tents. She's um, trying to figure out how to get home. And her dad calls her while she's in the middle of all that. And he hears some stuff. Well, he hears, like, the people outside, I guess. Yeah. But then she also hears what he's doing. Yeah. So they're both lying to each other. Yep. <laughs> Love it when it's mutual lying. Woo. It's great. Communication is key, ladies and gents. Yep. Yeah, he calls her worried because she has to take her medication. Yep. They get that reminder. And he's like, do you need me to come back to the house? Like, I can come back. And she's like, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's okay. Yeah. Ugh. I gotta look away for a second. <laughs> the baby. The yeah, baby. Um, but then the grave robber comes in. <laughs> there he Again. be. Look, and it's he's my like... husband. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't like him that much. I think he's cool, but not like that. I'd hang out with him. I would hang out with him, too. He probably smelled bad. Yeah. Take a shower, my guy. Please. Just bring a Febreze bottle with you. <laughs> Actually, bring like 20. Yeah. He's stinky. He's stinky, man. Stinky grave robber bastard, man. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, he pretty much like shows her the way out. Because, again, she's just trying to get home. Yeah. I'm guessing Shiloh just has really bad anxiety. I thought that too. Because the blood pressure and everything. Yeah. I forgot that the Great Robber just fucking peeks his head in like that. He slices the tent open and peeks yeah. his head in. I still think that's fucking funny. And he fucking tears it open. Amazing. He crazy. I, I still can't believe the fact that she trusts him. But again, like, who else is she gonna trust? She I doesn't would, know better. I would trust him over money bags over here. Same. I don't know. I don't know, man. Because, I mean, look at his kids. One of them's got a fucking peeled face on his. And he's trying to present um, his daughter Amber. But she's not showing up again. Because okay. she's high out of her balls on Zydrate. Yep. So they're speculating that Amber is addicted to surgery and um, street Zydrate. Yep. That's illegal. That's but so goddamn. Illegal. <laughs> I mean, which is pretty true. Yeah, they are in the fucking back streets now. Oh, yeah. And we get that. Is he just known as the Grave Robber, or does he have an actual name? No, he's just known as the Grave Robber. Okay, I thought so. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just known as the Grave Robber. And we get that iconic song that's been all over fucking TikTok, too. Oh, has it? Yes. Is that where I heard it? I feel like, I was like, this sounds familiar. Where the fuck have I heard it? But it's probably only come across my TikTok personally, like, a couple of times. It's been all over my TikTok. (laughs) (laughs) I guarantee if we send more shit to each other, it's going to be more sunk up. Pretty much. up, you know what I mean. Yeah. And here we are with Amber. Miss Paris Hilton again. Yes. Because she wants more Zydrate. Because she's going to get surgery again. Once again. Yeah, her apparently her appearance is always changing. Because she's getting surgery all the time. Yep. How much do you want to bet? I'm going to start hearing this song all over my fucking TikTok now. I don't know, probably. Probably. It's spying on us. I swear to God it is. Also, that's a fucking deadly place to get a fucking shot. Yeah. In the inner thigh, because you can just, like... It goes straight to the heart, basically. <laughs> That shit can kill your ass. That's why you have to put your insulin on the outer part of the thigh and not the inner thigh. 
Well, it happens. Yep. Either way. But we are getting a representation of how she feels during surgery, though. Which is a uh, orgasmic, apparently. Apparently. I don't. Mm. Which, like, I mean, I guess if you're addicted to it, yes. I guess. I don't know. My mom woke up during carpal tunnel surgery. I think she would uh, debate that that is not orgasmic feeling. <laughs> Uh, I think it's just mostly because she had Zydrate in her. Yeah. That's why she was feeling like that. Yeah. Whereas the, your drug. mom did not have anything. No. She had anesthesia for a little bit, then she woke up. Yeah. But this is where we do get uh, the explanation for Mag's contract. I do think it's funny that fucking Amber's, um, whatever is just dressed like that. They look like they came straight from Magic Mike. Yeah. Because they've got, like, some bondage stuff going on. I feel like I, I definitely enjoy this more muted. <laughs> because I'm enjoying it more without hearing the songs. Because I think they do the songs. I want some dialogue in between, not just straight songs. But that's my personal, like, Yeah, but the thing, thing. is, that's what I told you. Where it, there's a difference between a musical and an, and an opera. opera. I'm like, fuck. I guess Cats is an opera then, because there's no dialogue in that, basically. <laughs> Not the movie. Not the fucking movie. I'm talking about the 1998. We all had it on VHS. No, whenever any of us talks about Cats, it's it's not the movie. It's never the movie. No. <laughs> it's actually the good shit. Definitely. So Shiloh has made her way back home thanks to the grave robber. And apparently Repo Man does his shit behind the fireplace in their house, which is... Damn, dude, you could have found a better hidden place, but okay. Honestly. Honestly. <laughs> But yeah, Nathan is, has gotten called, I think, to Roddy's office. Mm -hmm. He's gonna check on Shiloh first, and she's pretending to sleep. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, could she, how she could sleep with all those fucking blinding-ass lights, though. Fuck. If I was in Shiloh's position, and I was left in my room the in, my entirety of my life, I would be like, you better be bringing me, like, a PS5 or some shit, because I'm not just gonna <laughs> sit in here. Just giving you something to do? Yeah, honestly, same. Because I can, I can vibe with hanging out in my room. I just need something to do. Otherwise, I'm going to go nuts. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So this is where Roddy gives me the assignment, I think, for Mag, right? Yeah. Yeah. Paris calls her a has-been soprano. And I'm like, my dude, she's a much better singer than you. No offense to Paris Hilton, but I'm sorry. The girl playing Mag, she, dude, she got better pipes. I'm sorry. Fuck yeah, she does. She's so fucking good. Yeah, but Nathan's like, I, I can't do this. Like, you need someone else for the job. Yeah. Because, of course, there's too much fucking history with that. Yeah. I mean, he, Mag is his wife's best friend. Yeah. And as we find out after this, I guess, right? And it's like after this, that um, Mag is basically Shiloh's godmother. Godmother, yeah. Her scary godmother, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> she just gotta look like it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see her uh, dressing up a scary godmother. Same. She would pass that shit off so well. She also oh looks God. like, um, the girl from Evanescence. <laughs> a little bit. Amy Lee? Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, I fucking hate that, like, Riley tells him, like, hey, remember you killed your wife. That's such a manipulative thing Yeah. To do. I'm like, damn, bro, that sucks. I'm like, dude, don't fucking do that. Don't do that. You know the fucking truth. You did. You did it. You did it. Motherfucker. Stinky man. The stinkiest of all men. And we got a grave robber over here who probably doesn't even smell that good. I know, what the fuck? And yet, Moneybags over here is the stinkiest of them all. Except for maybe Pavi over there with a fucking face over his. Gross. That's true. You'd think they'd have more than one repo man, but th I guess not. <laughs> no, they do. Oh. That's why he says, like, you need to get someone else for this job. Oh, okay. Um, I guess he's the main repo man. Yeah, but Roddy wants him. Oh, yeah, this is, like, the fucking scene where they're trying to... Where he's like, no, I didn't want to do that. But literally earlier, you were fucking having the time of your life. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, they're trying to fucking make him kill this one dude that's right there. Yeah. God, all these nurses are not wearing the right attire for their job. We need scrubs. It's the future. <laughs> Your leggies are all hanging out. Exactly. What the hell? But I'm just like, dude, 
They really need to cover up because what if something happens? Cross yeah. contamination and shit. Yeah. God, they're fucking dressed. Also, their as... shoes. Also, their shoes. Yeah. It's so fucking sad that they're doing that to him, like making him fucking remember everything. It's not your fault, dude. No, but he thinks it is. He thinks it is. He's so convinced. Yeah. I mean, they're both manipulative, so. Yeah, I don't like either of these guys. I I no. like Nathan a little more than Roddy, but not a whole lot more. I mean, at least Nathan pretty much kind of has good intentions with it. Yeah, kind of. I guess. Like, but... you, you can see that he's trying really badly. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, he, he trying. He, he um, trying. Plus, Roddy isn't doing anything at all but being a stupid little bitch yeah that's so sad it's so sad let's get an f and j yeah in the end he's still just like i can't do it yeah i can't do it even though he just brutally murdered somebody (laughs) but he walks away and now we're gonna find out in a little bit that uh nobody walks away from roddy and gets away with it apparently not even if you're going to be making a 17-year-old girl an orphan. Of course he wasn't going to care, though. So now Blind Mac has come to visit um, Shiloh. I still like the shot of her, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the shots of Mag because it makes her look very ethereal. Yeah. Especially her See, outfits. Yeah. I wish you got more of this dynamic between them two. Yeah. And she's explaining that <laughs> Shiloh's resemblance to her mother is very striking, and she states that she thought she'd seen a ghost. Yeah. But, like, also sadly, as we find out, Nathan had told her that Shiloh also died. Yeah. And she's just like, what the hell? (laughs) Yeah, Mag can also do this cool thing with her eyes where she can um, show, like, Shiloh her mom she just wants to like to have a relationship with her goddaughter mm-hmm. yeah that's basically the whole thing of this thing <laughs> where she's just like i want a I wanna, relationship i want this relationship because like this is my best friend's daughter yeah and i feel betrayed by the fucking husband because he said that you died like, that's not fair. She just wants... Because she promised um, her mom that she would be in her life. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we do have this whole entire thing where Nathan comes home and he gets really mad. Yeah. He gets mad that Mag is there and that Shadow's out of her room. Because, mm-hmm. of course. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> like, good sir. Everything is just everywhere right now. And it's just like, Whoa. And also, Shiloh's just trying to explain, like, hey, oh, the yeah. cringy scene's about to come up. Fuck. <laughs> God damn, dude. I wanted to die when I saw this scene. I was, oh, not having, same. I was not having a good fucking time. Same here. But, I mean, at least you don't have to listen to it. Thank fucking God. <laughs> also, like, I don't like the shirt they put her in because she very nearly has nip slips a few times. And this was a kid. And this was a kid. Oh, it's so cringy. Why is it here? <laughs> Why is this here? <laughs> Fuck, it's fucking... Ugh, I want to die. Okay, I'm going to look away for a second because I cannot. I cannot. Look away. I'm looking away. Tell me when it's over with because I, I cannot look at the scene will. without wanting to die. But yeah, this scene is just basically... Um, Shiloh and her teen angst. Of course. Teen angst. Teen angst. No, it's, 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 okay. it's fine. It is. But she just wants to be, like, fucking, basically, set free. She wants to be independent. She wants to do her own thing. And her dad's not letting her. No. Nope. I also don't like that Nathan slaps her at the end of it. I'm like, damn, bro. <gasps> right? You're shitty. That's where I was like, okay, I don't care about this anymore. I'm like, if he dies, I'm not going to feel bad. Because, like... Ooh. But, yeah, now we are in Jinko headquarters again, and... Amber's had a botched ass surgery. Yep. And she's asking she only she's only checking up on him to ask him to get somebody to fix her face. Bless you. Bless yes. You. Thank you. 
to mm-hmm. fix her face. To fix her face by the end of the night. Yeah. Which also goes to show how fast the fucking surgery is, because this is all happening within a day. Yeah. Which is kind of scary, I'm not gonna lie. Multiple surgeries in a day, which leaves its consequences later on during the performance. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it does. It's gross, but it's funny. Hi, baby! Oh yeah, so everyone treats uh, Roddy like he's a hero, he's a savior, because... I mean, to be fair, like... (laughs) He has saved a lot of people because of what he does. Yeah, see, if he just did that and didn't actually go kill people if they didn't pay him... Like, come on, dude. Yeah. Like, you created an incredible thing, and then you're gonna go off and kill people because they won't pay you right then and there? Shut up. I think they have, like, a 90-day thing, actually, if I remember correctly. I think so. So if you don't pay within those 90 days, you're fucking dead as fuck. Yeah, this dude has a fucking plan ready to go. Um, because he he calls Shiloh again, right? And he explains that he has her cure. Yes. Which in reality, he does not. He does not. He does not. He does not. He just wants a new heir. Yeah. And he has Jinko. chosen her to be the new heir. Yeah. Which is weird because I feel like there's that feeling of like, oh, she should have been my daughter. Yes. You know? I always got that feeling watching this. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like that either. It's weird. Oh, and then Nathan gets a plan for himself. Because he's like, I need to take down Roddy. Yeah. And then Shiloh asks, why didn't you tell me how to godmother? And then he's like, what are you talking about? Fucking gaslighting her. I'm like, dude, fuck, get out of here. You slapped her and gaslight her. Stop it. Whatever happens to you, happens to you, and I won't feel bad for it. I'm like, I can't feel bad for you, guy. Like, and you kill people for a living. Get baby. But yeah, Shiloh is convinced that she needs to go help Meg. Yeah, because she about to die. (laughs) Yeah, baby. You getting his little chest scratchy. (laughs) Oh, wow. Yeah, he really is killing the people, like, it's whatever. <laughs> uh, because Nathan went out and there's, like, security everywhere. And he's basically either knocking them down, like, unconscious, or literally killing them one by one. Yeah. Little baby. Because those security guards are ordered to kill him. Yes. And Shiloh has sneaked out. She done snuck out. There she go. Bye-bye. And Nathan does figure it out pretty quickly, because he goes to see her, and she's not there. Yeah. He kind of figures out what the fuck is going on a little bit. Not really. Not really. But he does, he does, like, assume that she's going to be there. At the opera. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It is amazing. Um, Shiloh is on her way, and apparently... Roddy has given her a dress that her mother has worn. Or that yes. was her mother's. Yeah, which I don't know where the hell he got that from, but okay. I don't know either. I was wondering that too. I was like, you, you keep a dress that she had when she was with you? Like, what? That's kind of creepy. Very creepy. Let it go, dude. It's been 17 years. Right? What the fuck? You gotta move on, man. You gotta fucking move on. Who? Wait, then who's the mom of his kids? They're older than her. They're way older. I don't really want to think about that. But also, it's probably from another woman anyway. It's true. Maybe a previous marriage? Probably. Wouldn't doubt that. But now Mm. we see everyone going to the opera. Oh, yeah. Grave robber sleeps in the fucking dumpster. Of course, that's why he's smelly. He's stinky. The stinky man. There's gotta be fan fiction about him on Tumblr. There's no way there isn't. There is. There is? Yeah. Amazing. There's... I don't think about almost everything on, like, AO3 and Tumblr, like... You got me. <laughs> also, um, Nathan's, uh, outfit, the repo outfit, kind of reminds me of Star-Lord for some reason. Does it? Just a little bit. I think it's the gloves and the jacket and somewhat the mask. Mm, probably. I can see it. I do wish we got more Meg, man. She's cool. She's very ethereal. Wish we got more of this stinky bastard, too. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we get the sequence with uh, the grave robber. 
He's literally just explaining the last act of this fucking movie. Yeah, I think he's the narrator for yeah. the most part. He's kind of like the narrator from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Mm-hmm. Except he doesn't look like Roddy. He actually looks like somebody who could have fun. Yeah. So everybody's getting ready for the opera. Amber's face is falling off because she just got surgery. I guess he can't heal fast enough, but it's okay. Also, this particular set reminds me of, like, early on in Panic at the Disco for some reason. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, for sure, it really does. Um, because everyone being introduced, I, yeah, introduced? Yeah. Yeah. Getting everyone pumped up for the opera. This is the most high-energy opera I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah, same. Like, damn, if operas were actually like this, I would actually go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, like, rock operas. You're just talking about Queen. Like... Pretty much. Yeah. There's this lady. I like her outfit a lot, actually. Oh, me too. Very sparkly. Yeah, we get, like, uh, a lot of other characters that are popping up singing about how they got... Um... Jinko changed their lives and... Got, they got operations and everything. Yeah, how it was successful. Yes. And it helped them, apparently. So now Shiloh is pulling up in her mother's dress. And then there's this lady who has to, who just has to show her titties. Yeah. She gotta. She's a single mom, so good for her. Damn. She really just showed her titties on live TV. Yep. Good for her. <laughs> good for her. I really hope your kids weren't watching. Because <laughs> that'd be kind of embarrassing. I do have to say, Shiloh's outfit here kind of reminds me of Lydia from Beetlejuice. Yeah. Like if the wedding gown was actually black. Yes. It reminds me of um, the hat that she wears in the beginning. Yes. That's what it reminded me of, too. It's like a mix of the two. Yes. I just thought about that, and I remember that they have fucking Chinese food the first night, and now I'm like, I really want Chinese food. Oh, fucking amazing. Because that scene does make me associate that with Chinese food. I'm like, God damn, I'm hungry. We gotta go eat something after this. Which, I mean, we always do, but... Yeah. Little baby! He's a snoozing boy. Oh, yeah, so Shiloh is basically at the headquarters, um, and Roddy has fucking made a goddamn video for her to watch. Telling um, her that she needs to kill the Repo Man, and she'll he'll give her the antidote for her sickness. Yes. He's painting, like, the Rufo Man as someone who's super dangerous and shit like that. Which I... Th- yeah! He Which he is. He is. And here's Amber getting ready to perform her her thing. And it doesn't last because her fucking face straight, just straight up falls off. <laughs> While she's on stage. She sort of starts it, but then it's like when she's twirling around, her face later just flies off. Yeah. And I kind of thought it was funny, honestly. There it goes. There goes her face. Would they not stitch that shit? Hello? Not enough super glue? Nope. No. There go her face. How'd that not hurt? I don't know. Everyone is also booing her. She's still high on Zydrate, I think. Yes. But she can't feel it. She runs off stage because she's embarrassed. I mean... I would be too. What the fuck? I mean, if I lost my face, I would also be embarrassed. Yeah. So that's a lot of typos. <laughs> These fucking subtitles. I think yeah. it's funny. It's fine. Oh, yeah. I really still like Meg's performance. Even though it's really fucking short. Yeah. I wish we had more screen time with it. I wish we had more screen time with her. She's ethereal, and I actually, like, absolutely love her costumes. Like, this costume she's wearing right here. You know I'm partial to the colors black and red, so I mean... It's so pretty. I also really like her eyelashes. They make her eyes pop. I usually wouldn't care for eyelashes like that, but for her character, looks really cool. It does. I I just, I really like her character design and her character in general. It's so pretty. Yeah, she's really pretty. She's someone I could do fan art of. Why not you? Because I can't draw people. (laughs) (laughs) Not confidently, anyway. I can draw creatures and shit, but I I cannot, I can't do people. They're so hard to draw. Anatomy's a bitch. (laughs) Yeah. And facial structure is also a bitch. (laughs) That's usually how it is, honestly. I just want to practice more, but, like, I still have writer- or writer's block. That's you. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, me. You I have, have block. I have artist block. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I don't even have writer's block. I just don't have time to write. That's fair. We need to make time. I can't make time when I'm doing this. 
We need to make time, okay? <laughs> oh, it's okay, I, we will. I really do love this scene, though. And I wish there was more fucking screen time for I it. I wish she'd stayed alive. Same. Because Mag does end up dying. Yeah, she does. She plucks her own eyes out with her, um... I don't know what they're called, but they're like what you put your on your fingers to make your give you yourself claws. They look really cool. But she's got them on her index fingers and she plucks her own eyeballs out because she doesn't want to pay for them. Well, I mean, I think it's that, but it's also just she's just sick and tired of this. She's tired of these shenanigans. Yeah. She's just tired of living this type of life, so she's going to choose to go out her own way. Yeah. Although I don't think she meant to fall on the fucking fence no. and impale herself. That was all Roddy. Yeah, thanks, Roddy. Uh, I think she just meant to just go her eyes out. Yeah, because she does say, I would rather be blind. And of course, he plays it off like, oh, it's all part of the show. Because, of course, also, that was gross. <laughs> it was really gross. But he cuts her down and she lands on the fucking set piece. That It's a fence and it's a pointed fence and it stabs through her. Which is a shitty way to go. And then yeah. she's just there for the rest of the fucking movie. Oh, yeah, she is. She's, she's just there. Nobody tries to move her or anything, which I think is kind of funny. But, you know, it's Yeah, because fine. Roddy just says that it's part of the show. Yeah, that there's nothing the to worry about. Even though, in a bit... Look, at, but they closed the curtain. They could totally have gotten rid of her body. Yeah, they could have, but they didn't. But that's why in a bit where it's just like, oh, this really isn't a part of the show. Yeah, this is... I don't feel bad for Nathan. No. Because, hey. <laughs> I don't feel bad for Nathan. Yeah. But Shiloh Shh. discovers that um, Nathan is the repo man. She was about to y- fucking rock his shit with a shovel. Yeah. She was able to hit him in the back of the head. Nice. But of course she, de- and rightfully so, she does get mad at him and she's just like, I hope you fucking die. <laughs> and the first thing he says is, I told you not to go out. And I'm like, bruh. <laughs> the hell, man? Keep smothering your kids like this. They're going to rebel. Yeah, they fucking are. Don't smother. No. Don't. And he does see that Mag has died because they made their way onto the stage. And they cut his fucking Achilles tendon, I guess. I think it's just the back of his leg. I don't think he reached all the way down. I th- yeah, I think it was his calf. Yeah. yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. It wasn't the ankle. We didn't pull a Chucky or a Sam. It's fine. Or a Gage. Or a Gage. Yeah, he, Roddy is just trying to make Nathan explain everything to Shiloh. On fucking stage in front of everyone, man. Like, damn, dude. This fucking sucks. It does. And he does admit to everybody that he's terminally ill. Mm Mm-hmm. And both the brothers are... They still think they're gonna get the fucking... Inheritance. Yeah, but they're not. They're not. And he tells them straight out that they're not, that he has chosen Shiloh instead. Yeah. If she can do what he wants, which is to kill Kill her dad. dad. (laughs) Which is not cool. No, what the fuck? He does tell her that he killed her mom, even though that's not true. It's not. And I don't think she ever finds out that that's not the truth. No, she doesn't. She doesn't at all. She does not Damn, that out. sucks, bro. And she will never know. No, because she, she still thinks that her dad did it. Because he does think that he did it. And it's sad. Yeah. Yeah, and Roddy fucking dies before. Before she before, can learn like, the truth. Yeah. Because the terminal illness finally gets him and he fucking dies. Perfect timing. Oh yeah, what a perfect time to die. Of course. <laughs> Good god, we got tuberculosis, my guy? Fucking got you quick. But yeah, she gives him a... F- she, she, he gives her a gun. She cannot fucking shoot her dad. Of course not. No. It's her dad. Yeah. Even through any... Through everything that they've been through, she just cannot do it. So he grabs a fucking gun and shoots him himself. Yeah. And then her dad does die. Yeah. Which, I still don't feel bad. No, I don't either. Because he wasn't great. No. I still don't feel bad. It's so sad, man. I do kind of like the song that they sing to each other, though. I I really did try to like it, but I I, I was like, I don't care. (laughs) At this point, I was so fed up with this fucking movie. I was like, oh my god, please just end. Please. If, if... Again, we had advertisements. And yeah. it felt like it dragged on for fucking ever. I was like, please, just end it. It really fucking did. Yeah, advertisements don't help. No. Especially when you're already watching a movie that you don't particularly enjoy. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, we're gonna be here forever. It's never gonna end. Please. 
To me, it just doesn't help with anything because I'm just like, mm, this is taking longer than I wanted it to. So Nathan is dying, dying, and dead. He's dead. He dead. Dead right there on the fucking stage. Yeah, like, he's really dead. <laughs> like, bye. Bye-bye. I can't believe that everyone's still just looking. Nobody is interfering. Nobody has interfered. Because they think it's part of the show. Of course they fucking do. Except for fucking Roddy falling over dead. Right. Everyone's crying, too. They're like, damn, it's magnificent. But no, there's literally three dead bodies on stage right now. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's the Stinky Man! You fast forward it too fast, and I was still like, oh, it's Stinky Man! Yeah. And Shiloh fucking leaves the theater. Probably never to be seen or heard from again. TBH. Of <laughs> I mean, I don't think so. She probably fucking ditched town. I don't blame her. I don't blame her either. I would, too. Same. After all this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> After all fucking- after one day! God, this is a lot to happen in 24 hours. A lot happens in 24 hours in movies, honestly. And I'm just yeah, like- Yeah, of course, right! Exactly. <laughs> a lot happens in fucking 24 hours. Or one night. Yes. And it's just like, what the fuck? Damn, bro. We okay? How we feeling? Not good, apparently. And she is free. Finally. At what cost? But she's free. At what cost? Damn. If her dad had died and Mag was still alive, she could have lived with Mag. That's true. I always fucking wanted that. I always wanted that for her because I'm just like, you know, what the fuck? Instead, she's just she like on her it. own and she's orphaned now. Yeah. No, it's just like, what is she going to do? Nothing. This the stinky man. So yeah, we get what happens after that. I hate that the more this man is on my screen, the more attracted I am to him. <laughs> For God's sake. <laughs> I hate that I have a type. <laughs> stinky man. Stinky man. <laughs> to be fair, this is the only stinky man I've ever been attracted to, I think. It's true. Except for maybe Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption 2. But that's, like, mostly because he's an outlaw and really can't be... Well, you can go get a bath, but, like, he's got a $5,000 bounty on his head. <laughs> yeah. Um... But he's explaining now that Roddy has died. Pretty much, Jinko was, like, up for fucking grabs. Yeah. To whoever wanted it. Yep. And it was his three kids. Yeah. And they actually did not follow in his footsteps that way. Nope. Which I thought was shocking. I thought they would have, honestly. Same? I really thought they would have. good for them, TBH? I think it's funny that Poppy sold Amber's fucking face. It's funny. To charity. She fucking went auctions it to charity. And it's her brother that fucking won it. Which is, and he wears it proudly. Yes. Yes, he does. And Luigi murders the top three bidders. Uh, gross. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. But yeah. And this is a Gene Co story. It continues. Yeah. Hopefully yeah, that's the better. <laughs> no more but repo, yeah. man. No. Fucking hell. But that's the movie. Ugh. My eyes hurt. <laughs> I mean, did you feel better watching it on mute, though? Yes! Oh my god, I fucking did. (laughs) (sighs) Listen, I usually love musicals and stuff, and shit like this is usually my niche, and I usually love this. I did not like the songs. I I won't say I hated them, because there were a couple that I did like, but a lot of them I did not. Uh, Most of them I did not. I was like... This is kind of insufferable for me. I was like, no, please. It hurts. Let it end. I'm begging you. Uh, amazing. <laughs> um, so yeah, what would you rate it? We're rating out of tombstones. I originally, okay, so I originally gave it a 1.75. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I had a 5. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna bump it up to a 2. <laughs> because uh, amazing. I, I liked it when it was muted. <laughs> uh, amazing. I gave it a 4. Oh, God. Yeah, shit like this happens, but it's fine. It just wasn't my flavor, and I was very disappointed, because I know you like this movie a lot. I mean, again, I don't care. I know you don't care, but I'm used to people shitting on me for having a different opinion, so... I mean, me too. I'm just But like, again, I don't care. Ah, I care too much. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Box office? Box office. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, some fun facts for me. I forgot. Yes. I forgot. <laughs> uh, so the budget for this movie was $8.5 I find that hard to believe for some reason. (laughs) 
Well, and the box office was only one hundred and eighty-eight thousand one hundred and twenty-six. But to Ouch. be fair, also it had a limited run in like I think twelve uh, theaters for a short time. Total? Yes. Yike! In different parts of the U.S. and I think one part in Canada. Damn, bro, that fucking sucks. Yeah. How to lose money on a movie? Nah. Bye, Red. Bye, Red. Uh, so here are the fun facts that I have. <laughs> oh. No, not my wire, sir. Yay. Do you want to get shot? Why is it spicy? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, okay, so here, here are the fun facts. Okay. Uh, so while initially released with mixed reviews, it has gained the cult following, uh, similar to the Rocky Horror Picture Show, managing to fill <laughs> theaters worldwide with costume fans performing alongside the film. I knew they were going to say something about the Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> I could I could feel it dripping. I could feel that. Yes. I'm just not one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. We all have different flavors and tastes and stuff. It's yes. fine. But again, yeah, it has gained a cult following just like Rocky Horror. <laughs> I can't wait for us to cover that one. We're doing that next year for Pride. I'm so excited for that. <laughs> um It's gay as fuck. <laughs> So, according to the director, Darren Lynn Bozeman, Paris Hilton was so passionate about the film being made that when production was going to be halted due to the budget going over by 50000 uh, Hilton made a paid appearance at a nightclub for the sum to make up the difference to keep filming going. Despite this, she is not credited at it as a producer. Damn. Good for her, though. Yeah. Huh. Um, I'm glad you had fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the song, I Didn't Know I'd Love You So Much, the one, uh, the ending song, Wish I Won Her Dad, yes. was originally a lullaby composer Darren Smith sang to his son. Aw. Damn. Okay. Uh, so Anthony Stewart Head was chosen for the role as Nathan Wallace after Darren Bozeman had heard him sing in the Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, sixth season, episode number seven, which was titled Once More With Feeling. Anthony Head has sung previously in the Buffy the Vampire Slayer series during its fourth season as well. Anthony Stewart Head has had several other singing credits um, to his name as well as one song in particular. It can be noted that his uh, rendition of Sweet Transvestite. Ah, <laughs> nice. From Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh... So, Joan Jett makes a cameo appearance as uh, the guitar player during the song 17. Oh. That was Joan Jett? Yes, I thought she looked familiar. (laughs) Oh, God. That scene was... Yeah. Rough. (laughs) So, uh, Darren Lynn Bozeman originally refused to hold an audition for Paris Hilton. Damn. Uh, He did not think that she would be capable and feared media backlash or accusations of stunt casting. Um... When he finally caved in, Paris came into the audition dressed perfectly for the part and rocked uh, the sound booth audition. And after the audition, he was convinced that she should play the role. To be fair, I didn't recognize her until you pointed out, oh, it's Paris Hilton. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so many of the costumes worn by Amber Sweet and the support group members wear Paris Hilton's own clothes. Nice. I'm glad. Wow, she really was a producer, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, credit her shit. Jeez. Exactly, right? What the fuck? Um, so, uh, Taryn Dunnage, who plays the character Grave Robert, plays the Repo Man in the opening sequence of the film. Damn. Stinky man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the entire set was built in one soundstage. Oh, really? Yes. Damn. Uh, so the band members of the Genetic Opera are wearing masks because originally the film was only allowed to have 20 extras. Oh. How many extras were there, do you know? I do not know. Ah, oh well. Thought I'd ask. It's fine. There was a total of 58 songs in the film, including instrumentals. 58? Oh, fuck. No wonder why this movie felt so long. (laughs) Shit. Uh, So when traveling through the underground tunnels, Alexa Penavega almost caught her hair on fire due to the many torches around her. I can believe that. Yeah. (laughs) Ah. The song Genetic Repo Man was originally not going to be in the film, but then the producers were not around, so Darren Lynn Bozeman quickly filmed Terrence um, Dunnage singing, and the reposition part of the song was shot three months later. Nice. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, the first adaption of the stage to screen was a 10-minute trailer made by Darren Dylan Bozeman to pitch the idea for a movie company. That's a long trailer. Yes. <laughs> Damn, I'm used to like two and a half minutes. Not ten. All right. So Paris Hilton shot the song, uh, Come Up and Try My New Parts, on her very first day on set. Uh, what part was that? I don't remember what part of the movie that was. I've already forgotten. Shit. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, the characters Heather Sweet and Lucy Largo were renamed for the film adaption. The names were changed to Amber Sweet and Luigi Largo. <laughs> Damn, Lucy would have been better. Yeah. God. Uh, so George Romero was intended to make a cameo appearance, but due to scheduling conflicts, he could not. Ah, lame. That so sucks. the film takes place in 2040 and 2056. Gotcha. So fun fact about Shiloh's medicine, her medicine is actually mints. Oh, it's just mints? Yeah. Like? The pills that she takes, they're just mints. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, as, as like, in character or just, like? No. The, what, the, what they had her take, it's just mints. Damn, bro, okay. Yeah, not in <laughs> film. <laughs> not in film, but it's, it's just. I thought that would have been a nice little touch, to be honest. <laughs> just like, yeah, no, she's not actually sick. Uh, so the first scene in the cemetery where Shiloh hides behind the gravestones, which she previously captured an insect on. Uh, yes. We can see the name Peter Block on the stone for a moment. Peter Block is the producer of the movie. <laughs> oh, damn, he did. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, Repo the Genetic Opera was originally a stage play uh, located in L.A. and New York City. Director Darren Lynn Bozeman also directed a version of the stage play in 2001. Hmm. Uh, so, Marnie Wallace's grave reads Marnie Wallace 2011 through... Uh, 2040. Oh. Beloved wife to Nathan, mother to Shiloh, may her soul rest in peace. 2011. <laughs> oh, I feel so fucking old. Yeah, same here, dude. Oh. You feel old? I feel old. I'm oh. older than you. <laughs> I want to throw the fuck up. <laughs> uh, so originally, this was going to be a direct-to-DVD movie. Damn. Yeah. Uh, in the original stage play... The character Nathan Wallace didn't die. Oh. I guess I should have figured that, but yeah. I mean, here we are. It's fine. All right, so I have two two fun facts left. Okay. So in regards of a possibility of a sequel, Alexa has been quoted saying, from the very, very beginning, we always talked about a prequel or a sequel to the film. Um, and it's hard because of right now... We all want to do it, but we know it didn't really do as well as we hoped. Um, we didn't really have a lot of support, but we were hoping that the fans will come back and it will be an underground cult classic that will grow and will eventually spark us to do another. Um, Bozeman also indicated interest, stating, I would love to do a follow-up to Repo and finish the story because it was uh, conceived as a three-part movie. Oh my fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but this movie is all about support from the internet and support from fans, and this is not a movie where you'll see billboards or, like, bus stop ads or trailers on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, it was additionally expected that Hilton would return for her role as Amber Sweet. Gotcha. Yeah. Probably a more supportive character. <laughs> Pretty much. I, th I, th I think so. Yeah. Considering that she donated her face to charity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of charity that is, but okay. And Whatever works, I guess. Here is my last one. It's getting drafty. However, in a video posted to YouTube, it was revealed that they no longer have control to the answer um, of the question for a future sequel since they no longer have ownership of the franchise, thus driving Bozeman and Dunnage to make The Devil's Carnival. And I have seen The Devil's Carnival. Is it good? I like it a lot. It's, it, it's definitely filmed different than this one. Okay. So I like it a lot. <laughs> Um, it's not gonna burn your eyeballs out while you're watching it, is it? <laughs> no. I okay. like it a lot more than uh, Repo, uh, like, I guess film-wise, like, how, how it was filmed. Yeah. Um, but either way, uh, I still like Repo. I cannot watch it because my fucking eyes hurt even more now. Yeah, my eyes hurt right now. <laughs> um, Ugh. But also, if you want to see more work of these two, it, it's going to be the Devil's Carnival. 
And uh, there's there's a sequel to The Devil's Carnival. Oh, neat. Yeah. I like those. Those two. Those two are really fucking good. Oh, Finn. What a baby. He is a baby. And that's, that's, that's all the fun facts you have for right now? Yes, that is all the fun facts I have. Sweet. <laughs> well, little spooks, that's going to be it for us today. So yeah, join us next week as we watch the 1979 sci-fi horror film, Alien. Yeah! I'm actually excited about that one. I really want to try Alien Isolation one day. I know I'm going to shit myself, but it's fine. <laughs> oh, definitely. Dude, so... I'll, I'll see this when we get to when we get to next week's episode. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to rat... Wow. Rat? Rat? <laughs> rat. Don't forget to rate us and tap that bell icon on Spotify so you don't miss an episode. If you want to follow the Guarded by Demons socials, we're on Twitter at Guarded Demons. We're also on Anchor, YouTube, and Instagram at Guarded by Demons. We also have an email, guardeddemonpod at gmail.com. If you want to write in and suggest some topics, movies, or games we can play in the podcast, we are also now on uh, Google Podcasts and iTunes, Apple Podcasts. Um, if you give us a five-star review on uh itunes we will read it here on the podcast also in regards to email uh be nice uh if you're not i will cry <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Uh, so I have control over the uh, Apple like iTunes reviews. So if you leave a five star rating and a review, we will read it on the podcast. Well, I will read it on the podcast. Uh, and also, we started a Patreon. Woo! Patreon! <laughs> so, joining our Patreon, depending on the tier that you choose, uh, will get you access to our Discord server. That is all of all of the, the tiers. All the tiers give you... Um, access to the server. Yes, and you get cool roles when you join. And you're all color-coded, too, so we know which one of you got which, uh, which tier. tier. Uh, and then... Other perks include, like, early access to weekly episodes where you can listen to uh, episodes a day early. Episodes like this. <laughs> yes. And exclusive episodes for the Patreon, just for the Patreon to listen to. So if there's, like, uh, like new movie releases or if there's a topic that we want to talk about that's just, you know, going to be exclusive for you guys. So you guys get that. Um, Ooh, should, we we also... do, should we do the black phone on there? We could do the black phone on there. Okay. Yeah. Um... You also get shout outs at the end of each episode. Um, and there's a lot more that you can get. You just gotta look at them. Right now we have like a five tier, five dollar tier, fifteen dollar tier. No, five, five ten, ten, and fifteen. 15. <laughs> uh, again, this is not like mandatory. You don't have to sign up for it or anything. This is just, you know, if you want to support the show a little more. Um, we do plan on doing like live Q and A's on our Discord server. Um, and we plan to, like, get a camera so we can do some fun, like, videos for the Discord and for, um, the Patreon itself. We're just trying to bring more content to you guys. And who knows? Maybe one day we will do some merch. Yeah. Yeah. Because I really want to, I, we talked about this last week, I really want to do a shirt where it says, there's always a jackass named Billy and a compilation of all the people named Billy who is mean in these horror movies, because I think that would be really funny. See, it would be really funny. I would love that. <laughs> I would wear that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, again, this is not mandatory. If you cannot support us that way, that's fine. We're just happy that you guys listen to us in general. Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, so again, I am Kimberly, and if you want to follow me on any of my socials, I am the Lesbian Spook on Twitter, where I retweet a lot of dumb shit from the bands that I listen to, some dumb memes from them, and uh, <laughs> I retweet a lot of stuff about being a lesbian, Wee. and a lot of stuff about horror movies. A lot, Let's a lot of go. stuff about horror movies. <laughs> Love horror movies. Also. Uh, to that one guy who suggested us watching Cannibal Holocaust on our YouTube comments, we will not be doing that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, we replied to that on our YouTube comments, but we will not be doing Cannibal Holocaust. Uh, we will not be doing a Serbian film either. <laughs> or Tusk. Yeah, or Tusk. <laughs> we Although like... I feel like Tusk could be a Patreon thing <sighs> at one point, but it's still gross. <laughs> If you want to torture us, we can watch Tusk for that. Just not a Serbian film or a Cannibal Holocaust. No, there, there is a certain, there's a list of movies that we will not watch. <laughs> Those two can, are on it. We can go over that in the future, but yeah. Those um, ones we will not watch. 
if you also want to follow me on any of my other socials, I am Spooky Scary Lesbian on Twitch and Tumblr. Twitch, I play some horror games, mostly uh, Resident Evil. I'm trying to branch out into other horror games. Um, but you can't blame me. Ari is my fucking comfort series. And Tumblr, mm-hmm. I write some horror content on there. Some dumbass fan fiction that I need to find time to complete. <laughs> I am sorry for the people that have been waiting for that. It's okay. We'll find you some time to, to write. Maybe now that we're recording earlier in the week, you'll be able to. <laughs> Maybe. I Maybe. don't know. Also, uh, we... Well, we... I came up with the... Oh, he unplugged your laptop. It's okay. It's like at 100% right now. Okay. Um, I have come up with, like, the schedule for next year up until, I think, June. Because June, I still have to figure out what we're going to do for Pride Month. Um... But I'm very, very fucking excited. (laughs) For the record, no, I... We will not be doing Scream 6 when it comes out in, uh, in March. Because we have a Scream month that's, like, starts at the end of April. Yeah. And then goes into May. (laughs) Which I know you're excited about because I have never seen Scream. I am very fucking excited, okay? I don't know anything about the Scream series. No. (laughs) I am so excited to get her fucking reactions to who the killers are and see if she could guess who the killers are. Why can I see you just secretly filming like, what do you think? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. I will give live reactions on the Discord, honestly. Do it. If anybody fucking joins by that time, I will give live updates. Oh, man. But yeah, that's it for me. Hell yeah. And I'm Lexi. If you want to follow me on Twitch, it's at Semi-Pro Eagle. I play a variety of games there. I do draw from time to time. Currently, I am playing the new God of War, Ragnarok. I am very, uh, just, it's very fun. Uh, it's a, the combat's a little frustrating, but I put it on a slightly easier mode. It's fine. But, uh, <laughs> it's been really fun so far. I can't wait to keep playing. Um, I also have a TikTok where I post clips from my live streams, uh, funny shit that happens, glitches, uh, NPCs doing weird shit, whatever. Um, and I do have a Twitter, also, uh, semi- both TikTok and Twitter are semi-pro eagle. Um, Twitter, I yell at NFT companies that try to steal my account, and uh, people who are being fat phobic towards my favorite content creators. So, that's what I do on, on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys. Stay, Stay spooky! spooky.